Welcome to Game of Books with Kathy in South Dakota. That's me. And Christy in South Florida. That's me. We're two newbie writers sharing our take on wine, food, and mystery books. And the authors who write them. Join us for the fun. Happy New Year, everybody. This grand occasion certainly (laughs) calls for some wine and conversation, don't you think, Kathy? Oh, Happy New Year. And I couldn't agree more. Great. Well, I'm saying jump right in, and why don't you tell everybody (laughs) about the wine you chose (laughs) for 2020, or is it 2020? I don't know. How do you pronounce it? I I don't know, but every time I say 2020, I want to hear Barbara Walters' voice in my head. (laughs) 2020. Let's hear you. Oh, no, I can't do it at all, but I love how she's so, like, specific, you know, just 2020. (laughs) But I think that probably happens to a lot of people. I think I'm going to say. I think I'm going to say 2020 instead of 2020. Just it comes off quicker, don't you? Yeah, that's what just comes to my head every time. (laughs) Well, whatever it is. So I chose Mm -hmm. a a wine based upon the label for this this lovely conversation. I chose Prophecy Wine, and Prophecy comes in all different kinds of varieties. but they have really great labels. And so I chose the Savion, the Marlboro Savion Blanc because of the label. I just thought it was so intriguing. And when I did a little research, of course, that's what they want you to do is be intrigued by the label. Mm-hmm. And so are you having a little taste of it? Yes, I had a sip. And? I mean, should I... Should I predict? Yes, yes, I do. Because <laughs> you always do that to me. <laughs> yes, tell me. Because it was so distinct that I, I feel like there's got to be grapefruit or citrus. Hmm. Anything else? Um, you're on. You're very much on track, by the way. Yeah, I I don't know. It's, okay. So it could be like a little. I don't know. It's greenish grassy or something i don't know it's it's very fresh smelling christy i think you've learned a lot during all of our tastings (laughs) (laughs) oh so that's how they describe it should i write it down fresh smelling citrusy (laughs) green wine okay (laughs) green wine okay so look at your label because the label is what's really important here and that gives away some of the hints so the label is the high priestess And the high Uh priestess represents wisdom and knowledge. Her inner reflection asks you to look within yourself and follow your intuition, which was kind of great for the new year, I thought. Um, And you'll love this. She inspires you to be more creative, which is interesting. Yeah, I know, right? So um, It is so pretty. It really is. It is. Her green robes represent the crisp and refreshing wine style hallmark of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And mm-hmm. if you look on the um, tree, the fruits on the tree represent the tasting notes. The mm. It's the capi- ca- uh, captivating fruit notes of grapefruit. Way to go. Oh, I do. Yes. Yes. And, uh, Citrus. I'm so smart. And pineapple. Uh-huh. Which I, oh, wow. I don't know we've ever okay. had pineapple that I recall. No. Yeah, let's, um, let me take another sip. I know. Now. I can put the bottle down. But that's so funny. <laughs> Isn't that I funny? Think I think I, I must have learned a lot because I'm serious. The first thing I was like, whoa, grapefruit. Well, that's the first thing. I'm impressed. Well, you have to taste it too. Yeah, no, it's good. Now that you're saying it, it's like. <laughs> it's very, um, for a Sauvignon Blanc, it's, it's um, uh, aromatic. Nice. I'm very yes. impressed myself. Yes, it's yeah. very aromatic. It's nice. Right. Yeah. So what do you have this with? Um, I, right now, I'm having it alone <laughs> with just this. <laughs> but I don't know. I didn't I didn't find any um, tasting notes that would match it with food. But I... All right. So let's guess. Let's yeah. Let's guess what it could go with. <laughs> well, I think it would be very nice with um, some cheese and some nuts, like a little appetizer, like a little, yes. you know, little cheese tray. You know what I I would think those you know like bacon wrapped figs or something. Oh, like that, that would be yummy. Yeah, because you get that I salty. Think that's what we would have. You I know? think Just so. Like an hors d'oeuvre, hors d'oeuvre kind of tray. Maybe some olives too. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, if for olives sure. Would go or not, but yeah. I love olives with anything. <laughs> okay, so speaking of prophecies, okay. um, mm-hmm. 
What do you think about New Year's resolutions? Did you make some this year for this new year and new decade? Well, you know, I I kind of always sort of do, but never formal about it. Does what do you mean? Sense? Like you don't publish them or something I, or what? <laughs> no, I think in my head I say, oh, you know, maybe I want to try to do this more or that more, but... Mm-hmm. There may have been a year where I decided to go on a particular diet right after the New Year's or something. But oh, yeah. other than that, no, I usually, I like to feel good going into the New Year. Mm. And so I guess I don't want to Yeah, you don't want to set yourself up too high. Yeah, well, I think that, <laughs> I mean, you, right, it's such a common um, thing to hear about. People set New Year's resolutions and then, and then it, you know, two weeks in have already Mm -hmm. fallen off their great high plans, and then they feel off about Mm -hmm. themselves. And I think that's obviously not a a good situation to be in. Right. But but I I think it's... Yeah, so usually, I mean, I feel like I make resolutions all the time. Yeah. I don't, and I never stick to them hardly either, too. But sometimes they do stick, and a new habit is formed, and I'm, like, really happy about it. It doesn't have to happen in January, but... Yeah, maybe there are a few I should think about this. Well, year. you know, it, it for me, I I do attach. Um, I agree with you. I'm always making new plans and and you know trying to always improve, which is you know a good goal. But mm-hmm. um, I, I guess the, the time changing, you know, whether it's the end of a month or end of a year, it seems natural. I, maybe just because I'm a mm-hmm. plan, yeah, I'm a planner by nature. But it seems like a natural mm-hmm. time to take stock of things for sure. Right. That is true. I do. I I think even, and the older I get, the more I take stock in yeah. what happened and am and, and astonished or, you know, disappointed. But usually I'm astonished because I'm like, really, all that happened in this last year? Yeah, right? <laughs> it, yeah. it is. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So um, along those lines, uh, you sent me a article that was done by Lisa Unger, a blog, I guess. And I just thought that was awesome. I was I was like, this is a good thing that Kathy sent me because, like I said, you know, I'm not always great at defining my resolution. And this and this was kind of interesting because she put down specific things rather than just saying, I want to do more writing this year. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So to, so fill everybody in on what kind of her thought on resolutions was. OK, so she um, kind of like we are saying, you know, resolutions can happen at any time. There's no reason why you can't try to form a new new habit or, um, you know, try to improve your situation and especially if you have some bad habits that are holding yeah. you back yeah and um so then she goes into some resolutions that she suggested for 2019 mm-hmm. and so one of them is schedule the time and honor the schedule mm. and I thought this was this is something we discuss quite yeah. often yeah and I know you sometimes well we shouldn't say sometimes you almost always are better at this than me but that doesn't mean that I can't strive <laughs> to be a little better I yeah no it's <laughs> probably not true at all but I I like the idea of what she said about you know figure out when you're going to do this but then honor it you know that's the follow right. through that's the hard part you right. know it's and and then also this she's specifically talking about the thing that you love the art the writing, whatever it is that you want to do that isn't maybe part of your everyday life. So you have to schedule that because nobody's going to say, Kathy, (laughs) time to go write, you know, (laughs) and so you've got to make it somewhat of a priority yourself. And Mm -hmm. just like she said, you wouldn't let a friend down if you made a commitment to them, would you? So why are you letting yourself down? And I thought that really kind of made sense because that did resonate. We do tend to do yeah. that a lot. We'll be like, okay, oh, totally well, I guilty. Have this to do and right. this to do, and then you say, wait a minute, yeah, it's not the end of the world if I don't get that thing done. But it would make me much, feel much better if I get this thing done. So I'm going to trade or something. Yeah, so. interesting. 
I mm-hmm. I had seen that article and I I tucked it away because I really did want to talk about it with you now mm-hmm. at the end of the year because I just thought she was so pragmatic. You know, no nothing extreme, right. just so pragmatic. Right. The next one was don't let your life derail you forever. Yeah. So in other words, hey, you know, shit happens. Right. <laughs> it happens oh, for to sure. everybody. Yeah. And there may become a time that you can't write for a week, but don't let that be an excuse for you not to write for months. Yeah. You know, or whatever it is that you want to do, you know, that fulfills you. Um, So I thought that was interesting because that is a tendency Mm -hmm. that a lot of people have. And I know we struggle with. Oh, yeah. Because you get away from something and then it's like, ooh, it's kind of hard to get back. Once you're back, you're happy. Yeah. It's hard to get back, though. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I thought that was – so we'll we'll put a link in um, on our blog here to the article. It's a a really um, just moderate approach, I think, to resolutions. Right. And she and she, you know, even she even references her another blog that she had, which was six reasons you're not being creative as you could be. (laughs) And again, those are just the same kind of common sense type Mm -hmm. things that that we use as excuses that are so easy to change if we just change our thought process going into it. I love it. That's what I think. Yep, I love it. Lisa Unger's great on everything, but on resolutions, too. I know, I know. So, And also, if you haven't listened, listen to the Course in Conversation, because she was just as great in person as she was on paper here. Delightful. Absolutely delightful. Mm -hmm. So another author that we love and we're going to be talking with in January is J.T. Ellison. And Mm -hmm. J.T. has... um, you know I love productivity tips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Christy's like, uh, but I'd love to get again. them from you. No. <laughs> <laughs> but JT's no, no. she's really into it. And like she's really into it and it's great. And so she um she has a different approach to um, I guess New Year's resolutions or ending the year. And she does this really interesting thing called her annual review. And hmm. um it's very detailed and she um, so if you go to her website, she publishes her annual reviews. I think she's got them on there for several years. And it's detailed, man. Like, it's really detailed. So but, what is it like a review of? So like, what she does what? is, and she got this She got this idea from another writer. His name is Chris Gillibo. And I will put the link in our blog for that, too. But um, he actually has, like, an Excel spreadsheet for it. But the concept is it's just kind of a, I know, really intense. But the the broad parameters are um, pretty simple just to look back on the previous year. And you basically make a list of what went right and what, what didn't go right. I mean, just it's as simple oh, wow. as that. Yeah. And I just... It really appeals to me because it's kind of helps you put an objectivity to it instead of maybe mm-hmm. more emotionally, which, you know, I, I, I thought, I just think it, the way she puts it out there. And then she looks at her last year's goals and kind of measures and sees what she met and what she didn't. I mean, it's just really wow. very, it's very, I mean, she goes into detail, like, I am so impressed. But for those of us that don't go into that, much depth I thought it just was a really objective approach you know like what went well what didn't right and then once I, I, I'm really going to be interested to look at that because I do like the idea of that and it, again it's something that you know I may not follow through with yeah but in theory it's like this would be a good thing for me so maybe I will try to <laughs> maybe that should be my accountability for the next yeah. podcast. Yeah. Well, and I really want to do this. Did you yeah. review your year? Well, it's interesting. And and so um and I had just reread today the original article from this Chris Gillibo and he really, you know, suggests even doing it on a monthly basis so you're not it's not so much to mm-hmm. review at the end of the year, which makes sense. Oh, that's that does make sense. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would be helpful for just everybody, not just writers. Yeah, no, for sure. And she, yeah. but JT, you, you need to go look because she actually, she goes into her, um, you know, her goals from last year, like how many books she read, 100 books in 2000, 
18. Oh do, I know. Do you count the books that you read? You know what? Because I just read so many in this last year that I'm like, I don't even know. I started. I, could... I actually started an Excel spreadsheet because I really did want to keep track. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. But um, okay. I, I have not filled it out for the last few months because Well, that's busy. what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. I but could, I think I've I could got... make a spreadsheet, but I might not fill it out. But I've got a, it's kind of nice to be able to look back because you forget otherwise. But she also, right. she tracks the num- number of words that she's written and it is impressive beyond. Like it's, it, oh, it, wow. it's awe inspiring. But anyway, regardless, it's really oh. interesting. So they, they, so you basically just, you look back at the year. If you have set mm-hmm. goals, you can look and see what you met, what you didn't, you know, so you, you give yourself some kudos for what went well and maybe some constructive criticism for what didn't. And then the next okay. step is to set some goals for the following year. And then they're very, wow. they're very in depth about what kind of goals and how to set the goals. But I just thought mm-hmm. it's so simple, right? Like write the goals mm-hmm. down, um, have some action items. You know, the goals should be for all areas of your life. And then mm-hmm. so that next year at this time you have a concrete thing to look back on and say, hey, how did I do? It, it appeal right. it appeals to me. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I do. I think it, I mean, I in my head, I'm starting to imagine the big letdown when I don't follow <laughs> a particular goal, but yeah. I'm sure there must be somewhere on there where it says, you didn't reach this goal, but this other thing came, you know? Right. Because who would have thought at the beginning of 2018 that a goal would be to start a podcast. Right, and have 45 episodes But by in, the by end the of the year, we... Ha- uh, yeah, so now, you know? after, you know, yeah, 2019, we were, yeah. you know... So, but at the beginning of the year, we I had no idea I was going to start a blog. I didn't even know you. I, you know, that was 2018. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the end of the year, I just look at all the different things that came up. And they, of course, they wouldn't necessarily be goals that I would have concretely put in January. But heck, I got some stuff done. So, right. you know, want to put that on there too. Like, yeah. That's why I like the, like what went well. And then you can list all, yeah. you know, all this really, think of all the fun authors we've gotten to talk to. And I know, I mean, just great experiences that we wouldn't have imagined. And, right. um, I, you know, it, I, so I really like that. I like starting kind of with the highs and maybe constructively mm-hmm. looking at maybe the things that weren't as, you know, maybe you could right. consider lows or whatever. Right, um, or things to work on. Yeah, maybe. that's yeah. how I would look at it is, you know, like, all right, well, let's, mm-hmm. you know. So I like that approach. Okay. She, but if you want to see detail, look at JT's mm-hmm. annual review. It is Okay, I'm going to. Uh, amazing. <laughs> it's really awe-inspiring, honestly. Yeah, great. So regardless of how you celebrate and anticipate the year to come, we thank you for listening. And we wish you a wonderful 2020. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks to our mysterious foodies out there for listening and sharing. Check out our website, gameofbookspodcast.com, where you can find links to all we talk about. And if you subscribe to our weekly newsletter, you can get those links sent directly to you, along with any exciting updates. We are also on Facebook and Twitter under at GOB Writers. And if you enjoyed this episode as much as we did, we would love to hear from you and please subscribe to Game of Books wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any of our book club ideas and quirks and conversations with award-winning and best-selling authors. That's all for today's episode of Game of Books podcast, where we share food, wine, and mystery every Friday morning, just in time for the weekend. This is Christy and Kathy saying thanks for listening. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody.